There's a verse in the Bible with regards to how to identify the Antichrist. And one of that um, condition is that this, uh, anyone who testifies of me, of Jesus Christ, as being the messenger of being the Messiah, yes, is not an Antichrist, but anyone who doesn't, then he is an Antichrist. Which religion other than Christianity accepts and acknowledges Jesus Christ as a Messiah? You're an RE teacher, you should know this. I don't think it's it does. I in the Middle East, I don't, I don't believe it does. So you, you think that the Quran, when it says in chapter 4, 171, yes, that Jesus is the Messiah? Do you think that is wrong? If a Muslim, trust me, if a Muslim says Jesus is not the Messiah, yes, then they are not Muslim. Because then they are, they are going against the very clear declaration of not the Quran, but also the Hadith, that Jesus is indeed the Messiah, the true Messiah. Yes. So unlike the, unlike the Jews, we do not reject Jesus as the Messiah. We do not reject Jesus as a prophet and a messenger of God. We fully acknowledge and accept him as the Messiah, as a prophet and messenger of God. We also believe that Jesus is born of a virgin. Yes, his miraculous birth, we believe in that. We also believe in the second coming of Jesus. I, didn't, I don't know if you knew of all this. I, I knew some of it, but yeah. what, you're, what you teach from textbooks is very different when you speak to someone. Well, it depends which textbooks. Exactly. Yeah. So, if you read the Quran, the ultimate textbook for the Muslims. I have read it. Exactly. I, don't under, I haven't understood it the way you made it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll recite the words for you. But, uh, yeah, sorry, you were saying something? So what do you, Okay, so the coming back of Jesus, the second coming. So let's look at Jesus has a twofold mission. The first mission was to declare the message of God and to basically take the message of God, of the one true God and the true message of God to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel. And his second mission, yes, oh sorry, that mission is, is in which he did not die. So he ascended to heaven. We do not believe in the crucifixion. So this is one of the main differences between Christians and, uh, and Muslims and the other difference is the obvious one which is uh, we do not believe Jesus to be God or part of God or anything to do with God Almighty other than being his messenger and his Messiah okay with regards to him being the Messiah from the Quran oh yeah sorry I was going to you you asked me that yeah so the second coming is to destroy the Antichrist to destroy we call it the Dajjal the Dajjal is the Antichrist which you call the Antichrist so one of his mission, Jesus, what? Dajjal. No, no, it's, it's this particular name given to the Antichrist in Islam by the Prophet Muhammad in our teachings is Dajjal. Now Dajjal is what you would refer to as the Antichrist. And is that like basically infidels, anybody who doesn't? It's a person, we believe it's a person. So it's not a metaphoric term as such, but it is actual person. And his description has been given in the hadith, which is the prophetic narrations. And uh, it's, it's another belief that we as Muslims have that in the end times, this is one of the signs of the end times, one of the major signs of the end times. And he will be killed by Jesus during his second coming. And that is one of the purpose of Jesus, to kill and also to declare to the world so the other purpose of him is to break the cross and to kill the swine. What That is a metaphoric term, meaning he will denounce Christianity and tell the people that Christianity is not the true religion and, and he wasn't crucified, but he came back. The reason he came back is because he was still alive and he came back and he's, eventually he will have a family and he will eventually die, as every mortal has to one day. And we believe that Jesus is immortal and God is immortal. And that is another reason I do not believe Jesus is any part of God or God Himself. Yes. Yes. So there are many things many Christians are unaware of with the Islamic Muslim teachings. Obviously, there's a lot of misconception going around, and that is one of the reasons we come to Speakers Corner to do away with the misconceptions that people have, to have a nice dialogue, like with yourself. I tried to have a dialogue with a lady, but apparently she came here to preach. Yeah, I mean, people come here to show, and actually, there's no point because yeah. we don't have any conversation.
true, yeah. Yes. So here is one of the chapters, Surat Nisa, which means women in, in, in Arabic. So the chapter's name is women because it deals with many things related to women. And this particular passage here is not related directly to women, but it's related to the question you asked about the Messiah. And he says here, this is addressing the people of Scripture. You know, we call them Ahlul Kitab, which means the people of Scripture. So the Jews and the Christians have been given a special category in the Quran. So there are people who have been referred to as mushrik or inf infidels, those who associate partners with God. Yes, but then th there are other people like the Jews and the Christian who have been given a special category because they have been revealed books. Why are the messengers, we as Muslims believe are the messengers of the Muslims as well. So as Muslims, we believe that Jesus was a messenger of God. We believe Moses was a messenger of God. And obviously we believe Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the last messenger of God is also the mess true messenger of God. So let me just read this. This is chapter four, uh, verse 171. It says here, O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary was a, but a messenger of Allah and his word which he directed to Mary and a soul created at a command which is in the brackets from him. So believe in Allah and his messenger and do not say three. Desist. It is but for you. Sorry, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he about having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the, in, uh, on the earth. And sufficient is Allah as a disposer of affairs. So as you can see, it, it encapsulates a lot of things about Christianity and a message to them. So the first and the foremost, it declares Jesus as the Messiah of God. Second, it says that Jesus is not the son of God, but he's the son of Mary. And third and the, uh, foremost, it says about not to, no, the first thing it says is do not, do not uh, create excess in your religions. Means do not go beyond the bounds of what God has already revealed to you. So you see many of the things like, and it also says, yes, the third and the uh, uh, most important thing is do not say three. Now this is addressing the Christians in particular. Do not say three means with regards to the Trinity, because they say the three are one. So all this is in particular a message to the Christians because they are one of the people of the scripture. Yeah. Go on, tell me. But that's not what Jesus thought, you see. When Jesus explained in the Bible who the Antichrist is, yes, he never mentioned what you just what you have been taught in your school. He says anyone who, who, who basically does not accept Jesus as a Messiah, yes? And, when, and I think there's a mention of Son of God, but not as God. But you see the term Son of God has been used by the Bani Israel, by the Jewish people, yes? As being someone who is righteous, someone who is who is accepted by God as being righteous. So it talks about the peacemakers. Yes, they are the sons of the Most High. You see what I mean? It doesn't mean they are literally sons of God. Adam was called the son of God with a definite article. Yes? Yes. Again, again, we don't have any um, contention with regards to that verse because. Which verse where he said you are the only true God, Father is the only true God? Uh, well, so this is John 17.3. John, I'm in the middle of a discussion. John 17.3. Okay, <laughs> Sorry about that. You guys are, like, I'm shocked is not the right word. Like, you're very learned. Like, it's really nice. It's, it's nice because a lot of the people you talk to, they just shout their religion at you, but you actually... Oh, yeah, we don't, yeah. we don't shout it down the throats. Yeah, no. The basis yes. Why you understand what you do. But in that context of that verse, that to me, like most Christians will turn around and say, well, that's where it begins and ends and everything else. But you know, I actually believe in that verse. And if you look at it from my perspective, so it says, um, Jesus, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Yes? And anyone who believes in, in him will have eternal life with the Father. Oh, sorry. No one comes yeah, to the Father except name. through except through Him. So you see, this, Jesus was preaching to whom? To the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel, because He says, "I've not come except to to the lordship of Israel." Now, He was preaching to them at His time, at the time of Jesus. He was the way, the truth, and the life, and no one would. 
come to Father, to God Almighty, except through his teachings, through believing in what he thought about the Father. So I have no contention with that. You see, Jesus was indeed the true messenger of God. And whatever he preached, or whatever any messenger of God preached, yes, that will be the truth. And if you believe in that message of truth, then you will have eternal life with the Father, with God Almighty. You see what I mean? So that's the reason I said during his time, he was indeed the only way. Remember, Jesus said he's the way, not the destination. Just explain to me um, the Messiah, because the Messiah traditionally in any language means savior. Yes. Why do you guys consider him a savior? I told you about the second coming. So he's going to be the savior. Yeah, he's going to be the savior for them. Plus, he was the savior for the Bani Israel to whom he came, to the children of Israel, to the Jewish people who, whom he came to. You see what I mean? Now, that doesn't mean that he did not come to anyone else. However, what Jesus' main mission then was to bring the message to the people to whom he was sent to. So even Jesus says that the words I preach are not mine, but of the one who sent me. So you see, Jesus is called the word, yes, in Christianity. But even he himself says that the word he preaches, that means everything that you read in your Bible, which is red letter, is not his own. Yes, he himself was told what to say and when to say, just like the Holy Spirit, Jesus is also not free to say with regards to religion what he wants to say. He has to follow the command of his God. No, his God. Shall I tell you why he says, why, why his father is his God as well? Here's another verse. It's in John chapter 20, verse 17. You know, Mary Magdalene comes and she wants to basically touch him because she doesn't believe that he's back from crucifixion. So she just wants to say, are you really you? So she, Jesus goes, do not touch me. I've not yet ascended to the father. Yes, but tell, to, tell my brethren, Tell them that I go to my father and your father, my God and your God. You see, this encapsulates Jesus' belief that his father is the same as the father of the believers. Yes? And his God. What did he say? I asked him, did he have a son? He said, what has this got to do? Yeah, but we can't talk about DNA between God and His creation, can we? Because God did not sleep with anyone like the way our parents pass on the DNA. DNA is something which is inherited from the forefathers, yes, from your, from your parents and from their parents. Now this is something we cannot relate to God Almighty because God, when He says, my son, remember I told you earlier, God doesn't only refer to Jesus as His son. God in Exodus, if you read, He calls Israel, and Israel is Jacob, yes, as His first begotten. There you go. And God, God again says to the peacekeepers, they are my children. God tells the judges among the Jews in Psalms 82 that they are God's and the sons of the Most High. So you see, God even refers to them as gods. And this gods doesn't mean God Almighty. You see what I mean? Because the, the term Theos and the term Adonai and the term Elohim even, it only, it can refer to gods other than Almighty God. For example, Moses is referred to as Elohim. Are you aware of that? In Hebrews well, chapter 7. That's the way Christians interpret, Christians interpret that as the characters of God, the, char the nature in them being the creator, the comforter, Rafa, the healer, you know, that's the way they enter. The way Allah, there's 99 names for Allah, right? Yeah, Allah is, yeah. Allah is one of his names. Yeah, yes. So and Christians will have the same... But you see, the term Allah, here's, here's where the difference is. Let me explain this to you. The term Allah cannot be used for any false deities. It cannot be used for any false gods. It cannot be used for plural and masculine. It's something which Allah is unique. The name is unique. It cannot be used for plural. So you cannot have gods, like the term God. Yes. yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? Like the term Elohim. Yeah. Yes, again, plural. It can be used for plural false deities. And it can be used for true God true God as well. But you see the term Allah is always used for the Almighty God, the true God. Now this is how we differentiate between the name of God and the term related to God. So for example, we have a term called Ilah. The term Ilah can refer to a true God and can refer to false gods as well. 
That's why one of the creed, the main creed, Islamic creed, it says La ilaha, that means we declare that there is no God worthy of worship, illallah, except Allah. You see what I mean? So this term, ilah, can be used for false deities, can be used for multiple gods or something like that, ilahun. And this is something that we have as a clear distinction between the name of God in Islam, the term Allah. By the way, you know the term Allah is used by Christians who are Arab Christians and Arab Jews. They use this term Allah. So in the daily life, they'll say Alhamdulillah, Inshallah. You see what I mean? This term, this is a very common terminology because they refer to God as Allah. And there's nothing wrong in that. And even the term that Jesus used on the cross, yes? When before he was uh, crucified based on the, on the Bible, he says, Illahi, Illahi, Lema Sabakhtani. This is Aramaic, by the way. No, he didn't say Abba, Abba. He says, Illahi, my God, my God. You see, this is another clear statement from Jesus, which tells you that he's, he's proclaiming to a higher God. He's saying, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yes. By the way, we don't believe that to be a statement from Jesus. The reason for that is because no, because it sounds like a person who has lost faith in God. You see, if someone is challenged in their life, they wouldn't say, "Why have you? Got, why has God abandoned me?" In fact, someone who's a believer, the the last refuge will be with God Almighty. So they will say, "Everyone else abandoned me, but God Almighty, you will never abandon me." But you see, in the case of Jesus, it's the opposite. Do you not think that? When I've lived in the Middle East, because it's a collective culture, yeah. they have, I believe, like, okay, I'm Christian, but I believe, like, Western Christianity is very egotistical, so it's all about I and me, whereas when you're in your Middle East, it's a collective culture, you don't question God, you seek refuge in God, whereas Christians in the, in the West will question God, but there's an ego in God. Right? I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. and I will not just say it's complete rubbish because you do have a point and it's a very good point you see one thing one thing which is a principle in the Quran is that Allah tells us that if this book is from anyone other than Allah other than God surely you'll have contradictions and discrepancies in it now this is a principle which I hold to when I actually look into other scriptures so when I look at a scripture which says that God is immortal yes and then the same scripture says that he was killed by his creation. There's a clear contradiction there, you see what I mean? So I cannot expect God to make such blatant contradictions and discrepancies in the book, which is known as one of the holy books of God. You see what I mean? So this is a challenge which is open for anyone with regards to the Quran, that if you can show a contradiction in the Quran, then please bring forth this contradiction. And to this day, this is a challenge which still stands. In fact, there's another uh, a clear challenge which says that bring a uh, bring a chapter like it. And the smallest chapter in the Quran is only three verses. You see what I mean? And to this day, the ha this challenge has still not been met. Two questions. I'm not taking any more of your time. No, no, that's fine. Two questions. The part about Muhammad being prophesied as the comforter, and I take comforter meaning someone who brings comfort, correct? Yes. I, so we forgive me if I'm wrong because I'm not I'm not trying to defend you. It's just what we were taught to teach yeah, go on, yeah. that Islam, whenever Muhammad went back to Medina and he uh, put the idols in the Kaaba, that it was by force. Like it was he took it by force physically? He took it by force. Yes, just like all the previous messengers did. So if you look at Abraham, yes, he also destroyed idols. The teachings. No, 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 not the idols. The people were killed in the process. Yeah, by force. So by force. But Abraham didn't. Moses did. Moses killed a man. Moses killed not a man. He killed entire community called the Midianites. So if you look at his, uh, if you look at Numbers 31, yes, Moses commanded his army to kill every male, every female, every child, yes, and only to spare the uh, the girls who, who have not slept with the uh, with a man, which means only to save the virgins, but to destroy all the male children. So where is, so now this is a sanction given by God. And the same thing with the Amalekites with uh, regards to Saul. All through the Old Testament because you had yeah. the Elijah and the prophets yeah. of Baal. And, and Jesus, right. by the way, Jesus will do the same in the second coming okay. based on the based on the, the, the New Testament. Where do you reconcile comfort with physical okay. violence? Let's, let's put these things in perspective. First and foremost, 
God doesn't tell us not to fight those who destroy your homes, those who oppress you, those who want to kill you. Yes, God tells us to defend yourself as well because your family and your life and the life of the innocent people is sacred as well. You know, there is a verse in chapter 5 in the Quran where he says that if you kill one man, it is as if you have killed all of mankind. And if you, if you save one man, it is as if you have saved. So God places the life of a person, yes, as being greater than anything else, as being something of, of, of great sacredness. And this, and this is something. So when Muhammad went and killed his enemies in the war, most of, most of the chapters that talk, yeah, most of the chapters which talk about the, the violence is with, in, the, in the context of war. Now, obviously, if you're fighting an enemy, you're not going to say, come and take this flower from me. You see what I mean? Of course, you would try before the war to try every means not to have a war, to try all peaceful methods, to try all diplomacy if you can. But if it comes to war, because those people, the, the Quraysh, they came all the way from Mecca to kill Muhammad all the way.